Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, I want to talk about how to upgrade your standard run-of-the-mill replay interface to something much more powerful using CaptureAge. You may have heard of it, and while you might think this is something just for casters, it's completely free, easy to use, and can be a great tool to get insights about your own play, whether that's online or against the AI. Admittedly, the interface is a lot to take in all at once, but it has tons of useful information available if you know where to look. In this video, I'm going to give a beginner guide to how incredibly easy it is to set up and what sorts of information you can get out of it. To start, head to CaptureAge.com and click Get CaptureAge. There's a free version and an optional pro version for around $5 a month subscription, which gives a few advanced options, like being able to jump to specific times in the recording. It's also a way to support the six-person team that put it all together. Alternately, you can just start with the free version. There's no need to sign up for anything, and you can always upgrade later if you find you're using it a lot. So now to actually run it, I believe you need the Steam version of the game, and the way it works is you start the game first, just like you normally would to watch any replay, and then once the game recording is running or you're spectating a game online, which it can handle as well, then you go to Capture Age. There's lots of settings you can play around with to get it just how you like, and when you're ready, you hit Connect. At this point, it syncs to your Steam game recording and is essentially recreating it in real time within the program. If you have the free version and want to speed up or slow down the game, unfortunately you have to Alt-Tab back to the base game recording and do it there, and then Alt-Tab back into Capture Age. Okay, we've got it running, but what does it do for you? One cool feature right away is that you can zoom out to see the entire map at once, and also zoom in so close you could count the hairs on a villager's head. That gives you a lot more control over what you're looking at during playback. You can also use Alt-O to turn off most of the UI and get some nice looking shots of the game. There's also additional options for Fog of War settings using Alt-F. You can switch between no fog, the regular fog, or a hybrid, where you can see the player's sight, what they've explored, and what they haven't explored yet as three different shades. It's an easy way to see how close someone scouting came to uncovering something and what info they had to work with. Using Alt-T, you can also toggle a technologies list on and off to see what eco and blacksmith upgrades each player has. Watching the habits and timings of stronger players who beat you is good feedback, and all the info about what techs are being researched is easy to read at a glance, with a countdown until the tech is finished. In the traditional replay system, it's often difficult to work out what eco techs each player has. How many units you have, villagers, military, and the total cost of your army is all readily available at the top, and pretty intuitive. It also gives your army's cost in gold as a percentage of their total resource cost. How many of each type of unit you have and how many of that type you have queued up is also available beside your resources to keep track of things more easily. Again, this is all great as a spectator, but even in watching back your own wins and losses, it's easy to assess when each player had a military advantage. I think it's good to reflect on moments that you might have played too passively and had an army advantage but didn't capitalize. Two other really important metrics for personal improvement are your town center idle time, so how much time your town center has been left not working on a villager, loom, wheelbarrow, etc., and then your total villager idle time, so villagers standing around doing nothing. As an example, if you have 5 villagers idle, then it adds 5 per second to the timer. Roughly speaking, every 3 seconds is equal to 1 lost resource, and every 5 minutes of idle time is 100 lost resources. If you're trying to improve, that's a great metric to check, and might be an area you can work on. In the early game especially, it's something you want to minimize, while also recognizing it's very difficult to get it down to zero. In an especially long game, the town center idle time actually isn't incredibly important, and is mostly a reflection of how many town centers you have, but the villager idle time can add up to a truly mind-boggling number. It can be a good indication of how effective your raids were at forcing enemy villagers to garrison for an extended period. Of course, there's info you'd expect about kill-to-death ratios of military units and a separate comparison for villagers to keep track of whose raids are more successful. Maybe you've done a better job at taking out their military, but they've done a better job at taking out your villagers. You can see it's quite a bit more depth than just the traditional KD ratio. Highlighting groups of units also gives information about how much HP they have left out of their maximum. HP isn't always a perfect reflection of army strength, but it's still interesting to be able to quickly compare. Obviously, a lot of this information would be game-breaking and cheating if you had access to it while playing, and I should point out that Capture Age doesn't work on a game that you're currently playing. You can also use Alt-M to switch between different filters on the minimap. You can filter to highlighting military, for example, to make the late game raids a bit easier to follow, or resource map to find sources of stone and gold more easily. The minimap also has a special symbol for town centers and castles, so they're especially easy to find. They're highlighted in white as they're under construction as well, so you can jump to key areas of interest. At any point in the replay, you can also hit Ctrl Alt S to bring up the details you'd find at the end game screen, except with the advantage that they're updated in real time. 
There's lots of information to help you piece together what exactly is happening at a turning point in the game. It even shows a few extra details that you don't normally have included in the achievements. At the top, you can easily see the ratio of villager numbers, military numbers, and even how many resources are currently invested in each player's military. Someone may have more units in total, but if they're all much cheaper, then you can figure that out with the various ratios. So far, this has all been for 1 vs 1 games, but all the way up to 4v4 is supported as well. Obviously, the volume of information in team games increases dramatically and needs to be organized a bit differently. You can switch between players with Control 1, Control 2, Control 3, etc. Though, unlike the default in-game replay, you don't need to switch between players very often and can see most of the information you need without switching. This would be mostly if you want to see a specific player's fog of war. In team games, the top bar doesn't show any player's resources, but instead their collective villager and military numbers. In the middle, you can also see your combined team numbers. Admittedly, it can feel like there's a lot of numbers to keep track of, and in those cases, I do find the balance of power in the middle can give a nice overview. For a deeper breakdown, you can see the text being researched and what's currently been researched by each player if you toggle Alt-T. And if you want to know even more about an individual stats, that's in the bottom right. You can use Alt-C to cycle through all that information and hover over a category at any point to get an explanation of what it is. Personally, my favorite is the one that shows the idle villager and idle town center time for each player, the total resources they've spent on units and buildings collectively, as well as how many resources worth of damage they've inflicted on the enemy team in lost units and building value. I find that's a bit more nuanced than a KD ratio as the cost of units you're fighting is also factored in, and it gives a different sort of perspective on how much you're contributing. I often find it's difficult in the moment to accurately assess my own contribution. In combination with other metrics, I think it's better than just looking at player score and gives objective data while also encouraging you to play aggressively if you want to look good in the replay. In this example, I have the second highest score in the game with the least town center and villager idle time, so I look like I'm doing great, but objectively, I've also done the least damage on my team. So maybe I'm being a bit too greedy or out of position with my units. In this case, Capture Age is giving me a bit more information to think about and reflect on the game. So aside from missing a few advanced functions, you can see even the free version offers a lot of extra tools to analyze your own games or someone else's. It works with spectated games as well, and you can use AOE2.net to filter for games to spectate of whatever rating or civilization you want. There's also ongoing updates and new features regularly added to Capture Age, so it's constantly being improved. At the moment, I know they're trying to get it to work with Definitive Edition through Windows Store, and performance issues are always an ongoing battle. Considering your computer is having to run both the regular game and Capture Age on top of that, at times in the past it's had performance issues, especially in team games. Hopefully though, this little overview of how to install, use, and read the UI was actually helpful. I remember my initial reaction was that it had way too much stuff going on, but at this point I think that's mostly a reflection of how powerful of a tool it is. I don't do commentaries very often on the channel, but I'm considering a switch to Capture Age for the next one. It really is a great project and becoming the standard for any sort of analysis, whether that be of other players' games or your own. That's all for this one though. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.